Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise, Praise Lord. the Lord. Will we all stand? And usually before we start service, we, we do tend to pray over the place before we begin. So I just want us all to just pray really into the presence of the Lord before we begin. In unison. Let's wrap this in the job.
to be like Jesus, just to be like Jesus. Oh yeah. I only want to be like Him. I So 
Praise God. I just I, I just thank the Lord tonight. Yes. You know, I'm not looking at the numbers because we're reminding. And even even this 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 small space we're reminding. Yes. Because we're praising the Lord. It doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter if it's two persons or if it's just me. Yeah. <laughs> we're praising the Lord. That's all that matters. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I have this scripture here, Second Corinthians chapter 13. Um, this whole chapter actually. And then after we have some testimony and then each one of us will exhort off of this. So Second Corinthians chapter 14, find um, that city, amen. Thirteen. Thirteen, sorry. Okay, we'll read together. Chapter 2. 1, 2. Yes. This is the third time I am coming to you in the month and of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I told you before and foretell you as if I were present. A second time, and being absent now, I write to them which heretofore have sinned. And to all the other, if I come again, I will not swear. Since you keep the proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you, Lord, is not weak, but is mighty in you. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be in reprobates? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though as we be, we be as reprobates. For we know we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak, and ye are strong, and this is also we wish, even your perfection. Therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness, according to the power which the Lord hath given give me to edification, and not to destruction. Final brethren, farewell. Be perfect, be of good comfort. Be of one mind, and in peace, and God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with an holy kiss. All the saints salute you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. must give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I greet you, Pastor um, Brother Anthony, Minister Sean, and the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. I am thanking God for, you know, for tonight. I'm thanking him for today. Praise. I'm thanking him for a lot of things. Yes, Lord. yes. And it is endless how, how grateful I am to God that I am even here in his presence tonight. And um, I truly find myself or count myself blessed at this very moment praise the lord and i say that with exceeding joy that i find myself to be blessed um and i know that you know i have a testimony yeah and it's you know to me it's one where i'm ever so grateful to god that i'm here amen tonight, praise the lord and that i'm doing so well enough to be here tonight because if it had not been for god if it had like the songwriter said if it had not been for God on my side where would I be and so I'm grateful and, and I know that you know me being where I was a couple months ago to where yes. I am now is is like a, a positive a powerful testimony mm. in and of itself so I know that God is continually working within me and bringing me through and so I'm you know expressing how grateful I am yes and I'm thanking God for the saints, praise the Lord. I'm thanking him for the leaders of the church. I'm thanking him for, you know, for everyone who prayed 
diligent. Yes, thank Even God. when we were going through our own struggles, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. We were praying for one another. Yes. And so I'm so ever grateful for the saints as well. And um, you know, I want to continue to pray for the saints as well. And I thanks to Anthony as well. Yes, praise God, praise God. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes. thank God, thank God. I'm just so blessed to be here on the rock. My brother and my sister in Christ. Um, you know, it's also that I allow myself to let God put this, this his thoughts into my mind. You know, to serve him and to, and to give him glory and worship him at all times. Yes. Yes. True. Praise God. God bless. I will say.
You know, I, I read this one, we were, we were in Luke this morning, and there was a chapter before it where Jesus was saying, you know, it's easy for you guys to judge, and you're looking at your brother's eye, and you see the mold, but you're a hypocrite because you don't see the beam in your own eye. So you can't, you can't, there's, there's no way you can judge if you can't even see what is in yourself. That's where the Pharisees messed up, that's where Israel messed up, and that's where a, a lot of us are messing up today, is that we cannot see ourselves. And we have, we, we have to see ourselves. It says prove your own selves, work out your own salvation, as much as, as, as it is we're, we're in this communion. As the scripture says in 14, when they with the communion of the Holy Ghost, we can't commune actually if we can't see ourselves. There's no way we can move forward. And in, in my prayer this morning, I was thinking about the body and how, you know, it's all connected. It's not like the hand is like cut off or anything. No, it's <laughs> the body is, is, is the body made of everything. It moves at the same time. But if the hand decides to go over there, and then this hand goes over there, and then this foot goes over here, I'm like stretching in place, but I'm not, I can't move forward because they're all doing their own thing. And so we want to move forward and to actually invite the presence of the Lord, follow the presence of the Lord, go where God goes and, and, and do what He says. That can't happen if everyone is doing their own thing. Because everybody is, is, is paying attention to the other person and their faults and what's wrong with them. But they can't see what is wrong with themselves. That's the crazy thing. So I, I, I realized this this morning, but I didn't, you know, I, I didn't hear what was going on. But the point that I want to stretch or to, to stress to, to everyone today here and to those that are watching online is to always do a self-examination. Whenever you get the chance, really go into your secret place, like whatever the Bible talks about, and ask the Lord to see if there will be any wickedness in you, because there probably might be. You know, as, as much as we want to be holy, as much as we want to be righteous, the flesh is still the flesh. And it has to be crucified daily. Daily. As we pick up a cross daily. So it's two things. We're crucifying the flesh and we pick up our cross. Can't do one without the other. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So that's just what was on my, my, my heart. Um, you don't have to come up here. You can just stand there or if you want to come, that's fine. And just pick a verse and, you know, just talk about it. Praise the Lord to, to the saints. Praise the Lord. It says, 
for we cannot do nothing against the truth but the but for the truth so a lot of the things that I that we're hearing is that um, whenever well let's let's go back to what we really talked about this morning about the foundation praise the Lord and how you can build on the foundation of Christ you can't I think someone had mentioned that you can't really build anything negative on Christ the foundation who is the foundation so if you're building something false on the found it's not being built on the prop on the prop on Christ you're building something else something false so God is truth praise the Lord and so you can't speak or push something that is not true onto the truth I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. So it says, for we cannot do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. So if it's not the truth, it's not going to come out as the truth. Praise the Lord. It's kind of hard to explain it. It's in my head. <laughs> First night, it says, for we are glad when we read our weak, and we are strong. And this is also, we, this also we wish even in your perfection. So I'm glad that, you know, even when I am weak, Christ is strong. The foundation that I'm, I'm that I have built on, praise the Lord, is strong. Praise the Lord. So it doesn't matter how long I go through my weakness, praise mm -hmm. the Lord. I know that as long as I am laying on this foundation, which is strong, then I will get through it. And so it applies even to the saints, to everyone, praise the Lord, no matter what your weakness is that you're going through, whatever it is that you're, you're struggling with at the moment, as long as you're in Christ, yeah. keep holding on. It might not last for a moment, for a night, you can never endure for a night, but sometimes it goes a little bit too long. And, and not too long in our sense, like in Christ's sense, but in our sense. Like we just feel like we can't handle it anymore. And so we just struggle trying to get through, you know, trying to get through and say, hold on, okay, it's been a month, it's been a year, but it's, it doesn't matter. However long it takes for you to get through your journey, as long as your foundation is strong, you will get through it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Keep hanging in there because it took that woman 12 years with the issue of blood mm. to get through her journey. And she was able to get through it with faith. Eventually, yes. we could have given up 12 years ago. She could have given up, but it didn't, it didn't matter. She kept going even to the, the, <coughs> to the man who was lame and needed to, to just get to, the, to the, 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 the sea, to the troubled water. Praise the Lord. It didn't matter how long it took him, every year, every time that water was going to be troubled, praise the Lord, he continued to go yes. to the water to be, to try to get to it. And it didn't matter how, how, how many times he failed until he was successful. So all we have to do is continue to hold on, hang in there, no matter how long it takes us, praise the Lord. If we have that long, if we are weak, praise the Lord, then we know that God is strong, praise the Lord. We just have to continue to hold on to him. He'll get us there. Yeah. We're not perfect, but he'll get us there, praise the Lord. So that's my uh, my two verses that I wanted to point out, praise God. Amen. Well, first of all, I'm not, I'm not, I was actually considering doing no, I'm not, I'm not, no about verse 8 as well, yes. because it's, it's true, that's what it is. Well, we can do nothing against the, the, the truth, but for the truth, when we're talking about the foundation, if Christ is the foundation, who is Christ? Christ is also the Word of God. Literally, the Word of God. And so, it, it, it shows how nonsensical we can be sometimes if we are, if, if we know or we believe that Christ is the Word of God, and then we start to have all these other things that we try to build upon it instead of his own word. The same materials which he himself is, and we're, we're using other materials to build upon that material. And of course it's going to be like, of course, because it's not the same material. You 
No, it's of our own thinking. And our words are not his words. They are not. We cannot use our words in the place of his words. And I think there's, the scripture says, if you add to the scripture, or if you take out anything, you can curse. So it's best to just play it simple. If the word says, examine yourselves, let's do that. So let's just continue to follow what the word is saying. As we see it, let's believe it. You know, the people say it seems believing, but we have the word to see. We're not blind, but we could be spiritually blind if we don't allow his spirit to let us see what the word is actually saying. Yeah. And sometimes it can be very simple, but we still don't take it. Praise the Lord. So let's keep that in mind. Who wants to go next? Praise the Lord. I just wanted to raise a quote before I go into it by saying, um, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Can you help me out? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you. Inmates, 
and there was no, and the officers with me, we didn't really tend to have no unity involved and really deal with it. So it dawned on me, I said, let's huddle up, let's work together as a team so we can be able to deal with the inmates' behavior and not be afraid to do so. So inmates respect strength in numbers. You know, for example, they're supposed to be at the particular house unit for the escort group. I ended with two officers, usually one, because everybody's trying to do shortcuts. I said, let's do the right way. Let's escort the inmate, two officers at a time, or even three. And sometimes they still try to try us, but now you can't go there. You can't get that contraband. Like, you can't talk to that inmate. This is that inmate. Take a shower and get your rep. If you prolong it, then you just for, for, forfeit your recreation for the day. And even though they get a little confrontation, you know, probably argue with us, but they respect the blue shirts that's in strength of numbers, three against one. So all they had to do was just, you know, follow orders and come yeah. out like they're not. So we had a one we had a one set in mind. It took it took it took it was a progress though, they have overnight, but we got through it by just encouraging one another, let's get the job done. We get paid to do this, let's do it the right way. Because so we can have an easy day, even though they might be confrontational, but they respect they respect the strength of numbers. Inmates don't respect the vision. They get if if, if the inmates they they observe us all day long. Like we got twenty four hours in cell all day long, twenty three hours one hour rec all day long. You know, so they observe the inmates. I mean, they observe us, the officers, and it's, if they see a sense of of the vision, they gonna take advantage of that. Yes, they gonna take advantage of them. I mean, true, true, true. I mean, I'm like, sometimes the inmates, they play with our minds, try to say certain things to uh, get us to have some conversation with my fellow officers. They yes. Have, I mean, these guys are crappy, but they work sometimes. And then sometimes the officers listen to them. I'm like, bro, why are you going to listen to him? He's like, he's lying, bro. <laughs> <laughs> don't listen. I said, don't listen, don't listen, don't listen to that, you know? If you got issues with them, let's take care of together as a team. You know, we always say teamwork and the dream work. That's the one I'm famous. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. how I'm famous slogan. I'm afraid you've heard it before. Mm -hmm. But it works, <laughs> you know? So, we, but we had the overall sense that we have one, one, we had a one set mind goal. So it was strength in numbers, you know? And that right there, it eliminated all the, the confrontation eventually, it eliminated all the stress. When, when, when my ship comes in, it was like four, four on a good day, five on a great day. Yeah, you know, five, four hours on a good day, five hours on a great day. And when they see us coming, I'm like, oh, C we call it sea C car, it's like sea car ships, we gotta, we gotta do this, that. But they respect that. And what, so basically what I'm trying to say is that we have an adversary here, you know, Satan, you know, and he is our enemy. And one thing about Satan, he doesn't like strength in numbers. We work together as a team and have one set my goal, then we put him on, we put him in his place. You know, we, we, we protect one another, we encourage one another, we if we have a conversation with one another, we handle with poise and wisdom and gentleness and respect, you know? Because sometimes we human beings, sometimes we argue, you know, this is what it is, but we have differences. But we do it in a godly manner. That's what we, you know, and you know, we, and we have this on the job as well. That's his life, you know. So, what I'm trying to say is that in order to have that peace of mindset, that the end said that shall be with you, that the it shall be with you, that God's love and peace shall be with you. In order to have that, that have one of my live in peace and harmony. The Bible said that He gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. We live in peace in in a um, in in a, in a communion as we congregate one another. And also individually as well, because we do have individual lives that is a total reality and we will walk with Christ. You know, you know, sometimes and they put thoughts into our heads and our minds that the mind is a battleground between good and evil. You know, each and every day we have a choice to do good. Each and every day we have a choice to love one another or to do something spiteful or do something out of frustration. Like I, I like how you Sean put it is that uh, you know what can I do to please God today? What can I do to serve Him and see me as a righteous person today? Doing things up, you know, it's everyday basis. So 
I know it was kind of long, I'm saying, but overall, I'm trying to say is the fact that you know, one mind, once one mind, once one goal, we have a goal to live in peace. So one day we can be with heaven, we mean with God in heaven. That's the peace of all peace. <laughs> you know, and, and but it's a fight though. It's a progress though. So we just gotta keep the keep the fight, keep the fight, 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 and just you know overcome Satan by working together as a team, and that's that. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I, I love that because that, that single word right there, one. And one is the same over across the whole Bible, not just in terms of the Godhead, but in terms of the unity. Right. With the people of God as a single unit, as a body. There's one scripture that says one Lord, one, one faith, one baptism. It's it's, it's, it's about the community, it's about the fellowship, the relationship that we have with one another. Right. And God is so smart and so intelligent that He had this plan out from a long time ago. When He first created the first human being, man, Adam, He said, You need a helpmate. And He gave me Eve. Because He understands that we're, He made us as social beings. Right. We, are, we are not made to be alone. That's true. We're not made to this, okay, I'm in my room, I'm over here, me and the Lord have a good thing going on. Well, that's, that's great. But you also have to have a good thing going on with everybody else. Because you're not a separate member. You are the member of the body. Right. You know, a, 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 part, a part of Him. Because we are His church. It, it, it's, it's, it's Him. We're, we're married to Him. So you're not yourself anymore. You're not by yourself. You don't own yourself. You can't say that because you are now given over to the husband now, who is Jesus. And it's interesting that you make the connection between the inmates and how they observe. We know that our enemy observes us as well because he's walking around, he's a walking lion, seeking whom he may devour. And the the minister of the elder that preached last week. Grand, yeah. of the grand. And he made a calculation about how many fallen angels mm. are now present with us right now. And they all have their own districts and their own territories. You know? There's a lot of them. It's a, it's a third. Isn't that true? Yeah. The third of heaven was fallen? Third, he said. That's a, that's a lot. And so we have a lot on our plate. We have a lot of battles to fight. We face right. a lot of encounters. And we may think that it's the person or somehow that person. No, it's the spirit in that person. Yeah, it's too bad. And so we have to use our power now. Our power that God gives us. Because when he was here on his earth, he said, Listen, I'm only showing you just a, a, a morsel of what you can do, which is more. I'm just here to, sh- to, to, to show you the basics. You will now go and do greater works than what I did. Praise the Lord. And we should be doing that together. It's not just we just wait for this one person. Well, that one person, he's supposed to be doing that. And that one person, he's supposed to be doing this. Yes, we all have our functions. But we need to work together in those functions. Amen. That's how we move together. It's not just this hand doing everything, and then this hand is strong, and this other hand is weak. We need both hands to, to, to pick up the weight. So that we gain more spiritual muscle. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, sir, I'll hand over everything to you. You can just wrap it up in a nice bowl for us. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. We give God praise tonight and thank God for what we have heard so far. Amen. Encouraging us to be united, right? To understand what it is to hold on to the power of God. Amen. So that we don't think that we are doing our own thing. It is what God wants us to be. And I look at the scripture that 
Mr. Samuel read and I'm just going to pick up verse 5 and look at something else I had done even for the Bible study. And it says, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. And that's just that first part. Uh, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own self. So there's a lot on our part. So who's going to examine us? We have to do that ourselves, right? But you know, uh, I picked that up in June, as I mentioned in our Bible study. In June chapter, in June, actually the whole chapter deals with the consistency and the belief in faith. And, and it says in verse uh, 3, let me read from verse 1 to 3, Jude the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James to them that are sanctified. So that's an important criterion when we consider ourselves children of God or Christians or saints. Sanctified not by uh, what a group or religious group would say that you are a saint, but sanctified by God of the Father and preserved, that's another one, preserved in Jesus Christ. When you think of being preserved, you think of being kept. Amen? Um, and he says, and call. So these are three important characteristics. Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. He said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you to exhort you that he should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. So there is a sense in which something has been given to us, right? That we should carefully um, handle and exhibit because as someone says, the life of a Christian is observable. You can't just go out there and say I'm a Christian, but that there has to be certain characteristics which identify you as a Christian as a child of God. And it says, you have to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto you. And when you think of faith, you think of um, certain principles. You're thinking of the gospel. You're thinking of the work of God that was given to us through um, the apostles. Even the apostles said this was based on the uh, prophets and all those. Jesus Christ laid the foundation. And here it is. And I have some notes here I want to look at as I go through. As you look in Jude, Jude is almost similar to 2 Peter chapter 2, where uh, Peter and Jude are embracing the faith, but they notice some discrepancies in it because there are false teachers coming in to subvert the gospel to take people off course and that's why you really have to be vigilant about your own salvation you know what i mean you can't leave it up to someone else to determine whether you are in the faith or not there are principles laid down the bible itself tells us what it is the holy ghost leads us he says he will lead you and guide you into all truths so that um, verse 3 says you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered. And when we think of contending, we think of an aggressive um, fight. Because Paul does say, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. You see what I'm saying? So it is an important way to understand how we need to hold on to our faith. We use this example so often about the football player. Here is the end of the football season, and you see how aggressive these players can be. The guy who has the ball, he has he's trying to secure it as carefully as he can. But the opposing team is trying to knock it out of his hand and get it from him as much as they can. It doesn't even matter how they get it, they'll trip him, you know, do all kinds of things as well. So we have to hold on to our faith, earnest and contend for it. And the central point is that the church has to do that to maintain its integrity, to maintain its uh, relevance, to maintain its relationship, to maintain its fellowship with God. 
Because one thing we know as children of God, as individuals, if we sin, he is always faithful and just to forgive us if we come. But it's not like we're going to continue in the sin and he's going to be loving us and keeping us. Because if we notice what happened in the Garden of Eden when they sin, you know, they had to go. That's just it. I had to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? There was no, let's read this thing out and we'll get to a bargain. No, no, no. Get out of here because this place does not, uh, is not going to entertain sin. It's the same thing you think about when he's preparing heaven or it's been prepared. Uh, it's going to be free from sin. So it's not that you can go there with any little sin. There's a pinhole sin. There's no such stuff. So, uh, so the people of faith must persevere to the end, resisting false teachers. And I often say, when we think of our local assemblies um, around here today, we really don't have any major problems. You know, we might think it is major compared, we might have individual problems, but when we think of major problems, the early church had them. Major, major problems. You know, I mean, you can go through from the very beginning, the Judaizers and the Gnostics and the uh, others, you know, many, many of them. But you can see Peter and John and Jude, they were, they, they, they did mince words. Um, if I look at just uh, one phrase that Peter might have used, uh, and then go to what Jude mentioned, Second Peter chapter 2, I'm just picking up. Something that he said. He said, but there, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers um, among you, who privately um, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves uh, swift destruction. And he talks about them in very stark terms. And then even when you think of Jude, Jude again says uh, in verse 4, But there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. And he, talk, he, he, he lists a lot of different uh, examples how these were people contrary to God's will and how swiftly they met their destruction. You know, really decisively this was done. Um, he talks about what happened in Egypt, and he talks about what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah, and the angels as Minister uh, Brad and Minister Samuels mentioned a while ago, the angels who did wrong and were just kicked out of heaven. So he's not going to tolerate slackness. There's no such stuff. We have to be careful how we live, and this is incumbent on the individual. There's no way you're going to blame me. I can't blame you, but you want to blame me because I'm a pastor, right? And I'm supposed to make sure that things are set in order so that I'm going to make sure that that responsibility is carried out. But ultimately, it is individual because when it comes, you didn't run well, who hindered you? You know what I mean? We can't go and say, well, Minister uh, Dixon said so and so to me and all that. That's not going to work. Um, so, here, the lesson, since, since I mentioned the past, the leaders have to be, in a sense, careful too. You notice in Ezekiel chapter 3, where um, 17 to 19, and it reads in this way Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. So when God tells the prophet, or the priest or the leader, make sure you act decisively, swiftly. Make sure you take care of business. He expects that because he says, and, and as he mentioned carefully, very well uh, about the, uh, what do you call it? Not what we used to say, boy, when I was born. The, what do you call it? Yeah. The what? Your profession. Oh, oh. Correctional officer, yes, <laughs> correctional officer. I'm getting me, what do you call signs? Uh, yeah, correctional officers, correctional officers. You are there to make sure rules are followed. 
There are some principles and guidelines. And if you go over that, they take advantage of that. You know what I mean? And even to your own detriment. You have to think about that too. You see what I'm saying? So you are there to make sure things are in order. You are correcting faults, problems. You're taking care of that. It doesn't mean that you can't be humane, but that's your, your job. And he says, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, and his blood will be required at thy hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. So you see, the watchman has a responsibility. You think, since you have mentioned even prisons, um, there are certain towers at certain places, and these guys are sharp. I don't know if they're still sharp shooters. You know, you get out there, you down, they're going to take you down, right? Why would they be so um, harsh, quote unquote harsh? You never know what this guy will do when he gets out. He could wreak havoc on a community. You know what I'm saying? So they're very careful. So the watchman is doing that because the Bible also says that the person who is the overseer, the person who is the leader, he watch for your souls. So you see how important the soul is definitely valuable. You know, Jesus invested so much in us that he expects all of us to support all of us. And especially with the, the pastor or the leader, be careful that you help the weak. Make sure that people don't get out of line. I'm not saying the pastor is going to be spanking anybody. That ain't going to happen. But be careful. Bring that person in. Help that person. And it's also incumbent on each of us to do that because he says that if you find such a one in a fault, you know, and treat that person. And you have to do it in meekness, considering yourselves. Because each of us is susceptible to that kind of problem too. So um, in, the, in, in the same way, uh, Paul in Acts chapter 20, verses 28 to 30, talks about the responsibility of the pastors. Here it is. He said, remember, let me read that. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. And he says here, Okay. Acts 20. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable. I'm sorry, 18. 17, sorry. And 28, I'm sorry, 28 to 30. My apologies. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseer to feed the church of God which he hath purchased. Remember, valuable invest his blood and there's no other person whose blood can do that. All right? Which is purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not spare the flock. So you have to realize that the enemy is coming in. That's why Jude comes back to the point, contend for the faith. Make sure you know what you have. Make sure you know what you believe. Make sure you know what you are consistent in. Or you have to be consistent in. The word of God, the lifestyle, the fellowship, the relationship. So you have to be careful that when someone comes in, the wolf comes in sheep clothing. He is not coming in to be nice. Remember, wolf in sheep clothing. And we have seen nature uh, documentaries. Wolves, they are going to tear the sheep apart. They are out to kill the sheep. They are ripping the sheep apart. So he says, you have to be careful of that. Be very careful. And the pastor, the watchman, is said to make sure that that does not happen. He says, therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone 
night and day with tears. So he was concerned about it. Same way Jude was saying, contend for the faith. Because he says, these people are like, they, 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 uh, they execute judgment upon all. He goes on to verse 16 in Jude. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's person in admiration because of advantage. So he's saying, be careful. Amen. Contend for the faith. Examine the faith. See whether you are in it. You know what I mean? And it's the word that you're going to use. It's the Holy Ghost that's going to lead us. Praise Him. And, and he builds a case. This is Jude and, uh, and also uh, Peter building a case against these individuals uh, who are so destructive. All right? They are wreaking atrocities on the church, the people of God, and they're doing that to their own advantage. He talks about the philosophers, and as I said, today we're not really getting that kind of stuff. But at the same time, we have to be very careful, you know, the little foxes that will spoil the lion or the grain will spoil us, in a sense, you know, that particular metaphor is used. So we think of even rebellious angels, Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. So the thing to avoid is these entities because they are engaged in certain things and to destroy us and the ultimate calamity is there. But um, notice what the Lord is doing now. Here in verse 20, Jude now is saying, but ye, he making a contrast between those who um, are not even concerned about their faith, concerned about their own ideologies, their own philosophies, their own desires. And he makes a point, he says, but you, beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith. So there is, remember the word he used earlier on, he said with, about diligence. Diligence is this careful working, excavating, so to speak. He said, beloved, when I gave all diligence, Carefully understanding the need to write to you about your salvation. They talk about this common salvation. So uh, there are certain imperatives, you know, to validate your own claim that you are in the faith. He says, pray in the Holy Ghost. He says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, to eternal life. Amen. Now. Uh, what is happening here is that we keep ourselves in the faith, we understand what's going on. Remember one of the Wesleyan men said, you know, he snatched me as a brand from the burning, right? Uh, so there is a reward for the wicked. There's also a reward for the righteous. Amen. And here, I like the, the, uh, the doxology, so to speak. And he says, uh, and others have said, fear putting them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by faith. Now what does this mean? Hating even the garments spotted by faith. It's actually saying here, you love the sinner, but not the sin. And the garments spotted, you know, a minister, Samuel's even mentioned that all our righteousness is as filthy rags. You know, we have to so be very careful we don't throw the baby with, out with the bathwater, right? Very careful, we want to bring others in. The Lord is running after us, so to speak, that, you know, physical, metaphorically. He is after us to keep us in the faith. He doesn't want us to go to heaven. And in the same way, none of us wants anybody else, the worst, our own brothers and sisters in the work of God to go to heaven. We have to be so careful that we nurture one another, we don't want to tear each other apart. We want to love one another because that's the commandment of the Lord. You know what I mean? It's, it's not like you just so done with that person. There should be such a resolution among us. I'm done with that girl. I'm done with that boy. I'm done with that man. I'm done with that. No, 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 no. Look at the prodigal son. You know, his father knew what was going to happen. And he was there waiting. You know what I mean? You think about um, if, when you look out there in the world and you see children just crazy, 
sometimes you see documentaries where they go to gangs and they say nobody loves me, my, fa my family doesn't love me like, like this gang. That's nonsense. That's a real bunch of nonsense. They don't have no clue what they're talking about. You know what I mean? Because that gang is teaching them to do all kinds of crazy stuff. You know what I mean? And even when they get in trouble and the word comes to the mother or father, what are we going to do? Run down to the place and try to get them back. You know what I mean? Why? Because they are our own. We love them. And the same way God loves us and we ought to love the brethren in the same way. Did any of us start throwing anybody under the bus? We, are, we don't have that right. We don't have, that is way beyond our pay grade. We ain't even going to get there. Period. So there is, when we see others straying from the faith, help them to come back to it. Praise him. And, it's, and here he says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding job. Name somebody else but God who can do that. You don't know anybody like that. Not the president of the U.S., not the uh, head of the UN, United Nations, not the president of NATO, or you name it, any head of everything, not the queen. Doesn't have this ability or capacity or anything like that. Only God can do that. Only Jesus Christ could rescue us from sin. Only He could die on the cross for our sins. And I said to my son, this is the last morning, that any sin you can think of, He became that for us. As horrendous as this sin might be, He became that sin. And Mr. Legalist, what's his name again? Saul! Look at Jesus! He probably said, I understand these crazy people, these fanatics following this, the itinerant preacher, and he was put on a cross, and the Bible says, not the Bible, the, 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 the Old Testament, you know, said, Deuteronomy, cursed is everyone who's having a dream. But when he met Jesus, he realized that that tree hand, that cross, was for our redemption. And I just said some time ago that anything God promises us, when He fulfills it, is far beyond our expectation. And look, Saul got a view of it. And you see how vigilant he was? I mean, that guy started running with the word as if, you know, there was no tomorrow. And here Judah is saying, Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. We don't have that ability. No matter how we have, we be so moral and we so decent that, you know, we have this beautiful upbringing. The devil is after us. And he's going to try to catch us one way or the other. As I said, I remember, I'm not going to call it anymore. I'm just going to call the guy who said per perpetrated it. The guy Epstein. Look at all these luminaries. Who got caught in that web? You know what I mean? So there's nobody too high that the enemy or these devious people want to try to trap. Now we're going to blame them. They should know better. They are this and they are that. And I'm not going to say names of the describers because you know you've read this stuff. But guess what happened? The devil is after every last one of us. You think he cares about any of us? And that's what. Jude is saying, these guys come in to subvert what you're trying to do. They can't do anything to the church, the word of God. It's, you know, anybody who thinks that's going to happen is just out of his mind. You can tell him I said so. Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yeah, you might look and say, oh man, something happened in this assembly. My like, God, even the pastor of God now. And just a few of the mothers and the young people left today. Oh my God. But guess what happened? It's coming. It's, it's, not, it's not even broken. Because nobody can destroy it. Look at Israel. How many times they were in the captivity and, and ultimately, sometimes, not ultimately, they saw them were destroyed. But God had a covenant with them. And if there's a remnant that's remained always, He promised them. 
He doesn't have plans for you. And even though we quote that today, not for us. <laughs> it is for those people who are in captivity. That sooner or later they're going to come out because he had made a promise for them. I mean, we can quote that because he has promises for them. But that was for them. You know what I mean? Now we can use that in a way. But the point I'm making is that we don't go. Yeah, it was for them. And the plans were already laid out. Nothing could change it. All right? So he said, to him be the, the only wise God our Savior. Right? It is important that we understand how God is looking out for us. And only he has the ability and the power to deliver us. And we see some other, look at 1 Thessalonians. Uh, yeah, we yeah, have some more time. 3, 11, 13. And uh, somebody find Colossians 1, 21 to 23. Well, I have Colossians 1, 21 to 23. And you that were sometimes alienated. Who can do that? Alienated and enemies in your minds by wicked works, yet now have he reconciled. So we have this faith. You want to hold on to it, this belief. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy. You see what it is? Now on him that is able to keep you faultless. Here it is. To present you holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. Now who can do that? Only God. He is going to be the final arbiter. He is a judge. If you continue in the faith, grounded, and not settled. So if you're not grounded, if you're not rooted in God, the way this, like John 15 talks about, you know, I'm the vine of the branches. If you're not rooted, you can't bring any fruit. If you have dead branch, nothing like that. So if we are in him, he says that you are, you know, rooted and grounded and settled. And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which he was preached to every creature which is under heaven, where I call a man our minister. So he says you are unblameable. And God is the only one. It's the Holy Ghost alone that can keep us like that. So we have to contend for the faith. It's, it's worth fighting for. And you can see for the disciples, the apostles, and all those things, it was also worth dying for too. And why is it that they were ready to do it? Because Paul in one situation said, for this light affliction, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. So this short lifespan is nothing comparable to the eternality, to the eternity, the everlasting that we will endure if we trust Him and believe in Him. You know what I mean? So it is important that we understand we have to earnestly contend for it. And when I say content for it, you know, I used, when I was growing up, I used to think if anybody says anything bad about the Lord, I should go out there and start. Basically, brothers, now, nah, Jesus doesn't want me to do that. Nah. You know, like somebody just if they say anything about their property, they're ready to kill you. And if they say anything about Jesus, we're not doing anything. We want to bring them into understanding that He loves them. You know what I mean? So we have different philosophies. You know? <laughs> So religion, if you weren't of theirs, they'd kill you, and they kill millions. But we're not into that. We want to preach for salvation, bringing them into a knowledge of the word. Praise God. You know? All right, so Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, there is something else we can look at. See what it says about this great God, what he's doing for us, chapter 1, verse 4. And he says, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. You see, you see the important criteria? Holiness, blamelessness, all these things. That he should be holy and without blame before him in love. You can't leave that word out. Remember that 1 Corinthians chapter 15? Full of love stuff. 
You know, you keep your mind to the bird, you speak in all kinds of tongues, you do all kinds of stuff and have that love. Brother, sister, that's what brother preacher was going to go examine yourself. Because a lot of times we look like we doing everything for everybody. But we don't know. Maybe sometimes we're doing it for show. I want the day to imagine and see that I'm doing that. What? Who cares? With in love. That is what counts. You know what I mean? And he says, yeah, according as he had chosen us. My God, it's important that we understand what we are as children of God. Colossians chapter 1 and 21 to 23. And he says, and you that were sometimes, no, I read that already. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 3 11. I hope it's 1 Thessalonians 3 11 to 30. And God Himself, and the God Himself, and our Father and Lord Jesus Christ direct you that. And the Lord make you increase and abound in love one toward another. My Lord, the same thing, love. And toward all men, even as we do toward you, to the end he may establish your hearts unblameable. So you see, in the final analysis, who is going to say, enter ye into my rest? You think Peter going to be there to tell you that? Uh-uh. You think Paul is going to be there to tell you that? You think Mars is going to be there to tell you that? <laughs> Mars is trying to make it with himself. You hear me? Jesus himself. Show your God. You know, and who is writing that life? We are writing it. He's not adding anything to it. Not subtracting anything to it. It's how we live. He says, to the end, he may establish your heart unblameable in what? Holiness before the president. Nah, before God. So you see, it is about him and how he's going to uh, qualify that. That even the Father of the Lord uh, coming in the Lord Jesus Christ with all men. Notice what even Paul says in Romans chapter 12. Present your bodies. A living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. Not unto the pastor. Because you know something, we might want to please the pastor or the leaders or all those people all we want. Let me tell you something. It's not gonna work. Yeah. What did he say? He's gonna present unto himself a glorious church that is without a spot or wrinkle or any such thing. You see what I'm saying? He is going to do that. As much as Peter and Paul and all those brethren and sisters, Lydia and all those young, I mean, maybe, they were vigilant in the word of God. Guess what happened? They're not going to be the final one. He is the one that enter into the joy of life. They're going to be lining up too. But luckily they've gone out ahead of us. So we're still here in the mouth and mind with those fallen angels trying to wreak havoc on us, right? But hold on to your faith. Take it across the finish line. That's our dear brother preach sometimes about the finish line, the race. Don't worry about coming in first. You can't come in first anymore. <laughs> None of us can come in first anymore. We wait out centuries later. Don't worry about that. You ain't gonna be first, period. Don't let me discourage you. <laughs> you ain't gonna be first. There are too many people that have gone already, but we have to get across. When we get across, that off, that's our finish line. And finishing takes stamina, takes endurance. You hold on to that faith because the devil is trying to knock it out of our hand, and he's doing it in all kind of subtle ways. I don't think, you know, we shouldn't think that it is some magnificent 
stuff or uh, some weird looking entity that he's uh, at that he's trying to get us. He knows what we don't want to do. He knows what we like. And he, he's skillful in that. And he dresses up, but he, no matter how he dresses it up, it is to destroy. So, to Paul, all those men, they're telling us, make sure you understand you're in the faith. Ephesians 5 27 is the last one, and that's probably what I quoted earlier on, because it is He who is going to what? give us that presence. Yeah, that He might present it to Himself. Oh, well, listen, because He's going to cleanse in the washing of the Word. A, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it might it should be holy and without blemish, right? And that church is not quote unquote Beulah. It is the church of the living God. So no matter where you're from, you from Timbuktu or Detroit, <laughs> you know, you could be from. I don't care where you're from. It is the one church. And he is the one. And no wonder there's a song that says, Faith of our fathers living still in spite of dungeon, fire, and sword. And you look at Hebrews chapter 11, you see how they went through a lot of uh, struggles. You know, even during, you know, after the death of Christ. I've been doing this study on <laughs> this job, the church. And it's horrendous how these people were destroyed. The hundreds and millions of people coming through the, the years and it's, it's 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 awful to know the kinds of people most of them even today most of the wars are religious wars you know what I mean really if you look back at it most of them religious wars I mean killing their own people you know you're not killing who don't believe in them but be that as it may what we want to do is make sure we understand that the faith of our fathers and living sin, they were in dungeons, they were one and all, they were torn asunder, but they maintained their faith. That's the only thing that's going to last. And look at it. I mean, when I think about the last few deaths, you know, that were close to me, I mean, my God. No matter what you have, you can't take it with you. If you don't have Jesus with you, if you don't have His Spirit and His love in you, we're not going to make it. So let us hold on to our faith. Let us believe it. Let us contend for it. Fight. When I say fight for it, don't go out and kill them by the But make sure you don't let anyone, not even your own self, because the main enemy is us. We are the main enemies against ourselves. And Look, sometimes we have done some horrendous things. Don't worry about it. You pray and the Lord forgive you. Don't let the enemy try to tear you down and say, remember when? That's gone. He is just too cute for me. You know what I mean? He's trying to let us know, well, you remember how dirty. Man, I know how dirty I was. I know some of those things that they did. So I would want anybody to know about that. God said, no one the past said, I owe no man anything. And he wasn't showing up. He knew who saved him. He knew who delivered him. And we ought to know that. And we ought to know that he's keeping us. So he's just trying to keep us from growing and strengthening ourselves spiritually. Let us stand and read the of the Lord. Faith of our fathers living still in spite of dungeon fire and so each of us must be strong in the faith. So God bless you as you keep trusting in the Lord, not letting go, not letting anyone thwart your desire, not let anyone try to bully you or keep you down. Praise God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your blessing and your mercy. We give you glory for the peace and the power and the righteousness, Lord God, that you have embedded in us, Lord Jesus Christ. We, amen, have your, that DNA, holiness, love, righteousness. 
My God, nothing of our own. We have to give it all to you to lead us and to guide us. Speak to our hearts and bless us, Lord. We thank you for each here tonight. Those who did not make it, we pray for them. That you will continue to use them to your glory. That they too, Lord God, will hold on to their faith. Be diligent about it, Lord Jesus. Be careful about it. Knowing that you are the only one who can present us for this. Looking unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. My God, bless us at least. By strengthening you in Jesus' name. Let everyone say, Amen. God bless. seriously grateful for all of you who tune in and subscribe and desire to use this as a means to witness to others so we become all missionaries to the Lord to spread the word praise God